All right. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about is a gem called ActiveHash. We um, we work on a lot of apps, and we at Pivotal Labs, we often find that people uh, change their minds quite often, especially in the beginning of a project. And we also find that you know, especially on enterprise projects, there are a million sort of pick list tables and databases, and they infuriate me. And I've seen them done. Uh, a number of different ways. Sometimes they're actually in the database, sometimes they're just lists of constants. But as soon as you have something like maybe a list of countries, but you only work in three countries, and you're probably only ever going to work in three countries, but those countries have maybe different tax codes, or they have different you know, country codes or prefixes for orders, you might want some object to, res to represent that country and to have a little bit of behavior around it. Um, so you might maybe make a class for it. And what I found is that when you implement these things over and over and over again, um, the, they fall into a couple common patterns. One is the, the migration to active record can be really painful. So if you just have strings and you say, I'm going to use the countries as strings in my database and have some if statements here and there, and then you want to all of a sudden, you know, you get bought by some big company, you have, um, you know, you add 60 different countries to your database, life is pretty bad. So I developed Active Hash, um, which is a simple base class that, that just sort of looks like Active Record, but can use a hash as a data source. There's also uh, an adapter called Active File, which can let you use YAML files, XML files, or CSV files to just sort of act as a, a quick read only data source. And so I'll walk you through what that looks like. Um, this is a, a very, let's see, another. This is a, a pretty basic example of active hash. You, you make your class, you define a field a, a little bit like a um, data mapper, and you say, well, my, my record is a name. You have an ID and the name, you sort of create these records directly in the class. And after you do that, if you say instrument.all from any of your code base, you're going to get two records that look and behave a lot like active record in the sense that you can say, um, you know, instrument dot ID, you'll get one instrument dot name. You also get a lot of very similar active record finders. Like you could say instrument dot find by name, and if you gave it trumpet, you'd get back ID number one. Uh, similarly, you can add a, uh, let's see, you can add an enumerator accessor. And by doing that, you, you basically get to access it like a constant. And this is actually what I end up doing more often than not. And this is the pattern that I saw repeated multiple times. The, the benefit of this over, say, using something in the database is that you don't have seed data to deal with. You don't have the potential that maybe the, that trumpet record might not be there. You don't have the, uh, the performance overhead of constantly pulling back the same data, which you, you probably would end up putting in memcached or something like that anyway. Uh, there are a couple of really big downfalls to this. It's in memory, but it lets you, that, that create method, you could call that from anywhere. You could call instrument.create from anywhere in your code base. Or, or if anywhere in your code base you had a reference to that one instrument and you changed the name, anything in that process is going to have the name changed. So it's definitely, it's got one very specific use case. And uh, if you use that, it, it might be pretty slick. Uh, you can see it on GitHub. It's a, uh, I'll show the link in a second. And it's got a pretty comprehensive README. Uh, my, my patch policy is if you find a bug with it and you patch it, I'll give you commit rights and I'll let you release the gem. Um, I can be a little bit slow at responding to things with you know, family life and a job. And uh, if, you, you know, if you have a, an XML file, you have a CSV file, and someone says, hey, we need to reference this in Rails forms, you know, drop down lists and whatnot, uh, you might want to take a look at this. The link for that is this. Any quick questions? I should mention too that the, the reason for this is that uh, you, in your database, if you referenced country, you would reference it by ID one. So your database would still have the ID. So if you ever decided you're going to make instrument into a full active record class, you wouldn't have to migrate any data outside of just creating the class and populating it with this, with this data here. We've actually done a couple of these migrations, and they go very, very, very quickly. So that's ActiveHash. Thank <laughs> you.